For hundreds of years, New Bostonians have been trying to foster connections between their future and their past. And one example is the first ever translation dictionary for Cape Verdean Creole and English. One of our guests is a man from Dorchester who has been researching the dictionary for 10 years. He's also developed a bilingual curriculum for the Boston Public Schools. We'd like to welcome Manuel de Luz Gonzalez. Also joining us is a writer and copy editor of the Translation Dictionary, Josephine Tavares. Thank you both very much for being Thank with us. Thank you for having us. I want to start with, uh, with Manuel. This has been a long project for you, and how is it that you became the first one to think about doing this? Well, um, since I work for the Boston Public Schools in the bilingual program, and um, we always saw a need to have materials such as this in, into Creole and English. But unfortunately, uh, those days have passed and were, we were never able to, to get these materials. It took me like 10 years to work, to research, to do all the necessary work to, to have this dictionary today as it is. So, but the need was, you know, the, the students and also me teaching Creole to Boston scholars, professionals, students and so forth, uh, but didn't have a dictionary. So everyone was asking, it was like a demand, you know, you need to have this dictionary, he need to have this dictionary. And that was the, the insight and the, the incentivation that I had with those working with those people, students and adults, for the need of this dictionary. Uh, Josephine, you're, you're Manuel's niece. You're, you're a generation later, mm -hmm. so uh, how do you see this dictionary in your future? Well, for me, I was born here in, in Boston, and uh, one of the things, and I'm really, really blessed, is that growing up I had my uncles and my family that really uh, oppressed upon us that keeping our language was important. And, um, and I write, so I usually write in English, and now with this dictionary, I'm able to write poetry in Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, and it's, it's been a, a huge transformation. And uh, since we did the launch, we, I was able to go to Cape Verde for the first time this past February, first time in my life. So it was amazing how it kind of just brought it all together for me. And I, I feel like this book kind of brought that for me. So. Manuel, what's also interesting here is you have a parallel with uh, what's happened in, in Haiti that, uh, you know, uh, going back, the official language was, was French, but the language people spoke every day was Creole. And same, you know, in, in Cape Verde, where, where you spoke Portuguese officially, but everybody otherwise spoke Creole. Uh, 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 why is it so important now to have this sort of written status for Creole? Yeah. In, in fact, I, I went to Haiti. Uh, teaching Haitian Creole to Boy Scouts in, in Haiti. And then I studied Haitian Creole at Indiana University. And that was my first step to say, well, if we can do it in Haitian Creole, why not Kaverian, in, into Kaverian Creole? So that was one of the, the dreams that I had, you know, we had to do something into Kaverian Creole. And, and then, you know, 99.5% of the people in Kaver do speak Creole. Some do understand Portuguese. Those who went to school do understand Portuguese, but otherwise, it's Creole is the day, daily uh, lives of the Kavirians in Kavir. And even students, you know, they might speak Portuguese in the classrooms, but outside, as long as they go to recess, for example, they all speak in Creole. So it's the language of the people. Now, I mean, you, you grew up with this uh, situation where in school they, they, they had you speaking Portuguese and mm -hmm. writing Portuguese, but um, what was it like for you? I mean, when you switched from Creole to Portuguese, wasn't something lost in translation sometimes? Yes, and then, you know, just because it was imposed and, and punished, in my case, you know, it was imposed, I mean, you had to speak in Portuguese. And plus, if you don't, or, or even if you had made mistakes in Portuguese, you would be punished. So there was kind of a fear, psychological fear, even spiritually, because I studied in a seminary, and uh, you know the, the the teacher would send me to the chapel to pray Ave Marias and and so forth. So it was like both spiritual and psychological and, and physical punishment. 
Just, I mean, what, what, what do you get from this? Because you're, you're a writer, and maybe you're translating twice, you know, <laughs> all the way into English again. Uh, what do you draw from this familiarity with the language? Well, one of the thing, the familiarity is uh, that it, it just really connects me uh, to the history of it. And I feel like um, with this book, and to actually think it's unprecedented. There's none like it. And it just makes me think about like the history of the language for over 500 years and how it did survive, even though with like what um, Manel said, it it's, was punishable like to speak it. And, and so it just brings to me alive that history. I mean, I've always had a connection with Cape Verde, even though I was born here. This, I f feel this process, like we've been doing events and you know, getting to know so many people that we hear the same stories. Immigrants that came that were told, like, you can't, you have to learn English, just forget about Creole because we have to assimilate and all that. And I'm like, no, this is part of our existence, it's part of who we are. And so this dictionary, it's like we're using our language to access English. And then those who don't know Creole can actually use it to learn words. I, I, it's funny to me because some words my aunt would say, I'm like, oh, what does that mean? So like now I have a reference. I'm, it's a reference. It's like, wow, it's a reference. So it's, it's huge. I've been really passionate. I think uh, a lot of people are like, okay, the dictionary, because that's you know, what I talk about a lot nowadays because I really feel like you know, people need to see it to understand it most of the time when um, people hear about it, they're like, oh, which Creole is it? And I'm like, just take a look at it. Take a look, feel it. <laughs> We're talking with Josephine Tavares and Manuel de Luz Gonsalves about the Cape Verdean Creole English Dictionary. Uh, Manuel, uh, you know, there's a lot of grunt work in, in putting this together. You have to look at other sources and, and, and make sure that these little deviations are somehow sorted out. I mean. What's that like, doing that with so many hundreds and thousands of words? <laughs> it's, it's kind of tedious in a sense, because you know, you have to read. I, I, I read most, about 220 books in Creole, or about Creole. And then I had to do interviews, and then I had to listen to CDs, the songs in, in Kevedian, the lyrics, and then look at the words, transcribe them, and then put the input in the computer. The, the other thing that I did in Calvary, I, I trained teachers how to teach Creole in Cape for the Peace Corps in Cape for two years. And that was a good experience too. Because the, the Peace Corps did a good job in Cape because you know, they had a department of language and culture. Everything was done in Creole. So when I got there, you know, they had some resource, material resource there. So it did help me to find out more uh, about the language. Not just that, but you know, living in the interior of one of the islands, the biggest island, really helped me to be in contact with people. And uh, that was a tremendous experience, working with the American volunteers in Cape Verde and see them learning Creole in a matter of nine weeks. So that was really amazing to me because, you know, when they, some Kevarians or other people tell me, you know, no way you can learn this language, that's not true. If Americans can learn it, why not Kevarians? Mm -hmm. uh, Josephine, you also had to do the copy editing, so this is where you get into real hair splitting. What was that like for you? Well, copy editing for, for my part was more of like, so now we are promoting the book. The copy editing piece we did with, um, in New York, right, with the publishing and all that. Uh, his daughter, actually, Liza Gonzalez, who she has her business marketing firm in uh, New York City in the Bronx. And um, she's been the mastermind behind all of it with the, the different promotions we've been doing. My part is more I write a lot of the blogs and um, I edit, like, whatever is written. Because, you know, this is language, so we want it to be well written. And... Um, we do write it in English because we want people to access it. And um, so to use kind of our way of getting to the Creole um, dictionary. Well, uh, we, we know it's not just for people who are Cape Verdean Americans. Yeah. It could be the Peace Corps, many other things. So if people want some more information about this, uh, Josephine, what's Definitely. The we are all over social media. Um, we have a Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. And our business and, uh, is called uh, Milimila. 
And uh, Mili, Mila, meaning I'm here with you physically, but Mila, I could be anywhere. And my mind can take me anywhere. And that's, the whole idea is that the book is now here. It's actually here. A lot of people still don't believe that this book, like this historical book, actually is in, in existence. So our mm -hmm. idea is to get it everywhere. So on our website, mili-mila.com, people can read our blogs and purchase it there. Um, we also do events around the city. We've done events with Old Navy in South Bay, Dorchester. We took over. And, um, you know, we have one coming up, which we're actually doing with Brockton Public Schools. That It's a fundraiser next Saturday on the 10th. Um, that basically for each ticket purchase, a book will go to a student in Brockton Public Schools. So we are trying to work really hard uh, to get it in the hands of people that need it, and uh, especially in accessing education. Thank you both very much, uh, Josephine Tavares and Manuel de Luz Gonzalez.